roll the video and you can check it out. Well, that was an event. So Blackmagic's event just finished and they covered both broadcast and film production cameras. And let's just say it didn't go as we all hoped. First of all, I need to say that it's always interesting to me that while every other brand and company out there spends the first 10 to 15 minutes having these big productions and skits and kind of fan flair, Blackmagic's live stream starts. Grant just goes like, I'm Grant from Blackmagic Design and I wanted to give you an update on what we have for IBC this year. Now we've got a lot of new products, we've got some new cameras, there's quite a lot to talk about, so let's get started. And you know, it's unique and I appreciate it. They started off with some of their broadcast updates, Studio 4K with some different connectors and features. They brought back the Micro Studio, which a lot of us kind of hoped they would bring back, but in a cinema camera form. So in a way, we got a box camera today. You could throw a little monitor on it and plug in a SSD to the USB Type-C. It films Blackmagic RAW. It's a box camera. <laughs> Obviously, what we thought was going to be the big news was the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. Not pocket cinema camera 6K. They removed the pocket, even though it's the same exact body. So we got full frame. We have our first full frame Blackmagic camera. But before you quickly go and start slapping your credit card, there are some key tech specs that you should know. There's no debate. It looks incredible because the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro looks great. The 6K, the 4K, like all Blackmagic Pocket cameras look fantastic. And especially for the price, they are borderline unbeatable. But it has been quite a few years since an update. And so to see the same camera body come out, <sighs> if we go on to the tech spec page here, uh, we can see that it is not in the class. They're not putting it in the class of the rest of the pocket line. They should have just called this pocket cinema camera 6K full frame. It's the same price as the 6K Pro. And you're basically trading a full frame sensor but you lose internal NDs, which is huge. It only comes in an active L mount. So here's the Leica mount that everyone was, uh, you know, rumored to have. But everything else, there's no gain in dynamic range. We're still at 13. Like this used to be like great on standard with everything else in this kind of budget cinema world, but that 13 is kind of falling behind. Shooting resolutions and frame rates. Again, by 2023 standards, Yes, it's nice to see open gate and nice to see various anamorphic options, but it's only up to 36 FPS, uh, whereas the 6K Pro shoots 6K 50. And then we all obviously were hoping for at least 4K 120 in a camera that would be announced today, but they actually downgraded. So on my 6K Pro, I can go 2.8K up to 120, but now to get to 120, you have to go down to 1080p HD. It's the same tilting screen, five inch, 1500 nits. Looks to be the same battery. The only other difference is they changed from CFast to CF Express. So now you'd have to buy a whole new different media card. I don't think anyone's worried about being a bad camera. Again, for 2,500 bucks, you get a full frame cinema camera that produces an amazing 12-bit B-RAW image. But again, considering how long it's been, that's just, it's kind of frustrating. I don't know what else to say about this camera. I thought this video was gonna be primarily about whatever this camera was, but not so much. However, there was some good stuff that came out of this event still. Blackmagic has very much entered the camera to cloud tech race. And they're doing a lot of stuff in house and kind of all within their own singular walled garden, which I really do enjoy. They threw a pretty intense curveball when they announced a Blackmagic camera app. <laughs> I think we all kind of raised our eyebrows on that one. You know, rather than just like talking about it, I actually downloaded all this stuff because they released it. But now I need to go on the computer and make a project. So I downloaded 18.6. They've got a new splash screen for when you create a new project where you basically will allow remote cameras to send footage because this app really is kind of a testing ground for camera to cloud, which they are then going to bring to the Ursa G2 first in November. And then the new, almost said pocket 6K, the new cinema camera 6K full frame and allows uh, proxies to be uploaded 
and original files. So we just got to enable those in the project settings when we're creating a new project. So let's check out the new Blackmagic camera app. And I would say this is my first time using it, but I actually recorded this whole section of the video, but I forgot to screen record the iPhone. So, whoops. The user interface of this app is pretty fantastic. I think it's definitely gonna replace Filmic Pro for a lot of people because it's free, uh, not subscription based. It's your nice run of the mill kind of user interface for manual controls, right? You just tap whichever setting you wanna change and you can go in and change it. You can have auto on all this stuff. You can have a single exposure dial, which will kind of brighten and lower everything down. A couple different stabilization methods. You get your audio control, all that good stuff. If we go under settings, under codecs and resolutions, you have all the flavors of everything that you could ever want. Uh, you can change color space. Hopefully it gets the Apple log, some anamorphic options. The real magic is when you go under the Blackmagic Cloud, you get logged in and we can see a test project because I downloaded uh, 18.6 on my computer. You can see that you can have a free account for two gigs, basically like Dropbox. If I go to upgrade, they basically have a sliding scale for how much storage you pay for. So you go from two gigs all the way up to one petabyte, yours for $30,000 a month. If we go, go down to some more realistic storage plans here, Honestly, it's more expensive than what I was expecting. 500 gigs for $15 a month. Uh, again, in 2023 standards is, is pretty high. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that is that pretty expensive? Or because it's kind of all part of the same syncing system, it, uh, it it's worth it. So if I go back to my camera now, you can see test project right above my time code there. And so here's and the cool test is I can just hit record. There I am, woohoo. All right, and we stop recording. And now if I go to media, it's automatically uploading proxy. Essentially what we should see over on this monitor, this is on the media page, is a folder should be created for my remote clips. I have Wi-Fi on and I have very fast Wi-Fi. Try just only over Wi-Fi. So it looks like right at launch, they're having some <laughs> uploading bug server issues. I guess I'll just run some B-roll from the presentation to show how it's supposed to work. Basically, as soon as you record on here and hit stop, it'll upload straight to the DaVinci Resolve project so an editor uh, can start working on it. Multiple people can be logged in on the app or again in the coming months to the Ursa G2 and after that, the new uh, cinema camera and you could have multiple cameras all logged into the same project, and that way they all upload to the same project immediate, or they can go into your cloud store for your originals, which is really cool. I love my little eight terabyte cloud store there. And so it's really cool to see them start the camera to cloud kind of sector. I think we all saw this coming at some point. I think a silver lining for this event is that uh, we got a free app, so we got something for free. It's like a free goodie bag on our way out. Uh, kudos to anyone who wants to purchase the full frame cinema camera. But personally for myself, my, my wallet is happy today. That's good because I wasn't ready to buy another camera anyway. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.